we were in the office the other time. Last week we were talking, preaching about discouragement and depression. And um, I received a call during the week reporting a message, a suicide note that somebody dropped on the church page. And when I received that message, I was very busy, but I said, send me his number. They sent me the fellow's number. I was not even led to talk to him about don't kill yourself or kill yourself. The only thing I was led at that moment to tell him was to say, come to see me, brother. Where do you live? He mentioned, come. When can you come? He said, Sunday. Come on Sunday. And to my amazement, he agreed. So he came this morning and there was no need for counseling. Why? He tried to kill himself because of rejection. No job. No one ever called him back after any interview. And on Saturday, somebody said on Saturday, he received a message to come to National Assembly for feedback on an interview he did. He could have killed himself before Saturday. Are you seeing that? With joy. With joy we draw from the world. Come on. Everybody. Hallelujah. You know, I was amazed when that man spoke with us this morning and said, I already have H2SO4 in my table. And um, so I didn't know why I obeyed that word to come to Ibadan, but I just knew I had to come. And yet the results came just the day before. Can I, can I say something? There's something I know about discouragement is that it's a cloud. When it comes, it leads people to make wrong decisions. But with joy, we keep joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's so much joy in heaven, right? <laughs> Woo. 
Hallelujah. Now, you may please be seated. Uh, I still we have a long way to go, so God bless you, choir. Thank you. Can we please celebrate this gift of God to us in human form? Oh, I will love you guys. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, especially this morning, I want to welcome the latest couple in town. Amen. Um, <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you. If you are wondering why we are happy, you need to understand. You guys mean everything to us. I've never been that happy in a wedding. I'm telling you. The only issue is that you need to pray for me. That God should help me to know how to dance. Because if not, I would have been the one that was scattered at least yesterday. But if I dance, I'm still scattered because... You know, I dance not in language that human knowledge teaches. But those who compare spiritual things with spiritual things, you know what I'm saying? You seem to understand what I'm saying. How do you understand? You just believe. With faith, we draw also from the world. Hallelujah. I wrote something yesterday on my social media page that indeed I can say two bona fide Christians are getting married. Now, it's not that you are getting married, you are married. Man of God, you will not receive those phone calls again. Where is she now? Has she got in there? Give me feedback. She's in safe hands. And we are sure. Let's celebrate these people for us. He sang yesterday. You, you can. I was gonna give, I have the file. I saved it. We are going to project that song when it's time for Thanksgiving. If you don't have the file, come and get it from me. I have the file. Can once again, can we bless God for their lives? God bless you. Please be seated. So we'll get to Thanksgiving time. There are many of you seated that in no distant time from now will be at your own wedding also. If you invite us, we'll come. And there are some of you that if you don't invite us, we'll break in, we'll crash the gate. You don't even have to invite me. We'll crash the gate. Praise God. Such a glorious wedding. Organized, detailed, succinct. Beautiful. Beautiful. I kept telling my wife, this is beautiful. We love you guys. And there's nothing we can do about it. The only issue is that you are soon taking our daughter to a bakali. Who are jumping to come and meet you there. Hallelujah. I have much to say, but when the time comes, I will, I will say some things that many of you be hearing for the first time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, so laws of attraction, continuation. Um, first service, I spoke about the law of presentation. Get the message. I will not have to go back. But for the sake of the newly wedded couple, I'm going to touch a few things that has to do um, that will benefit you now and um, will benefit you in future much more. All right? So, the law of presentation, we said nothing is valued more than the way it is being presented. All right? Meaning that it doesn't matter how good something is, it will only be recognized to the degree that it is presented nicely. Do you get what I'm saying? All right? So, we also um, said presentation involves the following. Carriage, 
And courage responds to good self-esteem. You see, the difference between good self-esteem and poor self-esteem is knowledge. And I, I need to really help you emphasize this. The difference between good self-esteem and poor self-esteem is what? Knowledge. The one who has good self-esteem simply has the knowledge of what God thinks and what God has concluded about him or her. The one with bad self-esteem is ignorant. And that's why there's something about, there's something with poor self-esteem when the esteem is not solid. You will be um, sinking many things in. I need to break it down. In the sense that that you are intelligent is a fact. But if your esteem is poor, you want to flaunt it to everyone to see. Because you are not too aware. So it is your flaunting it that makes you aware. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, when your esteem is good, all right, even if you flaunt, it is for the right reasons. I'm not seeing anybody who flaunts something is having bad esteem. Do you get what I'm saying? For instance, my wife is my wife. All right, if I decide to be quiet about her, she's my wife. If I decide to tell the whole world I love her, she's my wife. I don't need any more knowledge to make her more of my wife. Do you get what I'm saying? It's my wife. Hallelujah. Amen. So you need to be aware of what you have. What that will do is that it will help your disposition. You will carry yourself with so much grace and excellence. Let me say this to you. Humility does not represent bad courage. Humility is not bad courage. That you are humble does not mean you carry yourself anyhow. You can be righteous yet with your head lifted above your shoulders. Do you get what I'm saying now? Very important. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. All right. Look at what Paul and uh, what Peter told the guy at the gate called Beautiful. He said, Look on us. Sil silver and gold we have not, but such as I have, I give to you. He wasn't flaunting it, he was saying it for a purpose. You get what I'm saying now? Very clear. I have this, I give you. All right. Jesus was speaking, book of Luke 4 18, was describing prophecy that had gone ahead of him, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And when it was done, he said, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in all your sight. He was aware. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So humility is not lack of awareness. It is awareness enveloped in grace. Are you following what I'm saying? And let me say this to you. You must, you must, carry, you must learn to carry yourself properly. Your boss have an adage that All right? the way you carry yourself is the way people will carry you. If you carry yourself anyhow, no, people will disregard you. Do you get what I'm saying now? Carry yourself not based on your past, but based on the revelation of God you have about yourself. Hallelujah. I actually wanted to tell the media to go on my social media page all right, and get my pictures in consecutive years. Maybe 10 years ago, 7 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 years ago, and till the recent, the reason why I wanted to do that is that to show you that attraction can be worked on. There are people now that feel drawn to me that, all right, in the, um, in the last 10 years, if we were to be talking about 10 years ago, they would never consider someone like me as someone that they can learn from. The version of you that God shows your future is not the version that can fulfill it. You need to evolve. Some of you need to hear this. The version of you that God shows your future partner is not the version of you that can successfully marry that for that sister. You need to evolve. Attraction can be worked on. And let me say this to you, but thank God we have a few married ladies now, all right, in this place. Let me say this to you. You can either choose to constantly make yourself beautiful to your husband. All right, you, you can choose it. That every day when you wake up, you are going to make sure you you look more attractive to this man. He's your husband, you can entice him. Do you get what I'm saying now? 
What I'm saying is, he above your pay grade. Church, say amen. amen. When you are married, I will tell your wife this same thing. It's your husband. There's no crime in going to the market and buying nice bum shirt for your husband. You and your husband in the house and come looking nice. I bless God, ladies in this church are schooled. Amen. You don't tie rapper like someone that lost a child and then just jump in. Just tie rapper. Just. Sorry. My wife. I don't know what used to happen. I'm cool, calm, and collected. But it's true. And I will still say more. <laughs> just that. Uh, should I write down? Like, <laughs> Kai. They've taken away the brakes. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Mm. Now we're in school. That's how one sister went by herself to say that one brother is her husband. No crime. One morning, around 5 a.m., she now wore joggers. I started jogging. The kind of jogging that can make you lose weight. And she jogged to the brother's house and knocked the door around to six. Ah. And the brother came and said, I was just jogging by. What is he jogging by? <laughs> and I, eh, do you? Know? See, and I, I branched to say hello. In all the cases that this thing used to happen, that those brothers used to be hungry, that you think they are hungry because they don't want to be enticed. Hero, they are hungry because they are not attracted to the sister. If it was your crush that jogged by, you may not say which went inside, but <laughs> can, can I join you in jogging? Attraction in cotton, so is attraction. This brother vexed. I thought it was more than the sister's issue. She he vexed. I didn't know what he was going to until the sister said I was her husband too. The same me that was consoling him. I needed consolation. <laughs> now, hear me. Church, I know some of you now you have the mind of Christ and you are hungry now that pastor you don't talk like that this is a lady calm down calm down no I have not said anything about the sister way she doesn't dress well see what I'm saying but I'm just saying that if the attraction is not there it is not there one of the ways to frustrate yourself is to force yourself on somebody who is not attracted to you there's no frustration greater than that. Do you get what I'm saying? Young men, can I advise you? If, a, if your proposal with a girl is not, before even talking about the length of the proposal, if after proposing, she said, don't call me, I'll get back to you. He doesn't like you. When she likes you, she wants you to call her while waiting. She will want to know you more. If there's if there's no communication, huh, attraction can grow. She has cut you off the pipeline. She doesn't like. And let me say this to you. If you like, be Ramsinoa plus who again? All the people in your mind. If she doesn't like you, she doesn't like you. And the only way to experience frustration is to hang around a girl that likes somebody else, not you. Do you get what I'm saying? There are ladies that what they like in a man, the way they want a man to dress, you are not even close. It doesn't look like you'll be close someday. <laughs> they, 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 they've, they've studied you. That if this guy can be worked on, they looked at you. When they looked at the future, they saw 1930. 
They said, not this one. What I'm saying, is it clear? <laughs> it is one thing not to be something and be a potential. It's another thing that this fellow is not and this fellow is not a potential. If a lady, if my wife liked a guy that dresses like Michael Jackson, I'm not a potential. This is me. I can wear jeans and round neck, and, but this is still me. Take come on, wash, shine, shine, boom, come. Not, that's not me. And I understand my level. There are many things that if only we apply wisdom, you don't need stress. Do you get what I'm saying? And I want to appeal to ladies in the body of Christ. If it's not your type, sandwich it in the first communication. Yes, the first communication. It is wickedness to keep somebody's son hanging for two years. All right, because you want to actually say yes to somebody else. It's a wickedness. So we are looking at the law that steers up interest in your direction. We talked about presentation. Number two is the law of value. Value. Everybody is attracted to what is of value. In the midst of a situation where people give complaints for other commitment, they are still able to make quality time for what they believe is of value to them. Nobody is truly busy. Their time is only a portion to things based on preference. Do you get what I'm saying? Time is only a portion to things based on what? Preference. Nobody is truly busy. If you walk your way to be of value in the heart of people, they will give you time. That's the truth. Sometimes they have so many things that are of value in their hands. Do you get what I'm saying now? That you will need to walk in higher dimension. Of, that's why I tell you, if you are spending 10 minutes with people, make sure you are leaving them better than you found them. Sometimes a young guy is asking a girl out and the girl knows that this one cannot make what God has called for out of me because this one still needs to be raised. It's the truth. What, what is, the, what is the, the, the level of value that you are carrying? Not just the value you represent. You may, you may, you may be projected as of more value only to be checked out and found wanting. Do you get what I'm saying now? What, what is the level of value you are carrying? Value is directly proportional to investment. Yes. Value is directly proportional to investment. There's something I personally detest. I believe, and I've said this on several occasions, that yes, I do, is not a call to postpone your brain or the capacity to use it. It is not. I don't believe that a woman who says yes sir, to everything is of value. That is not a sign of respect. Respect sometimes may mean that you will have to take a stand as against what is the norm because you are there for the preservation of a man. You were called the same name that the Holy Ghost was called, helper. And the Holy Ghost does not always agree to everything. There are things you want to do and it gives you a sign. Have we done from this on your own? Do you get what I'm saying now? That you have invested quality investment in your life means that there are things that you will have to stand and say, I oppose this. With all love in my heart. With all reverence that I have for you. But I'm still going to take my stand. This is against the values of the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Quality investment. Quality investment. Quality investment. God told me in the year 2011, he said, sell your clothes and buy books. The books will later clothe you. Sell your clothes and buy books. The books will later clothe you. There are many people who are good looking, radiant. They look highly sophisticated, but they are dull. Very dull. They don't know anything, even about their field of study. They don't know anything about it. The last time they picked a book to read was when they finished university. They will not read further. They will not do anything. 
They go for interviews and mess up the whole place and say, I'm looking for who will accept me the way I am. Who are you? And it's the truth. We need to start saying these things now. It is not everyone who is unemployed that is employable. Some are unemployable. Because they will not add quality investment. I was, I went, I think in the year 2017, I was sick. And um, a nurse was to um, give me an intravenous injection. And she tied my hands. And then she was holding the injection. And the hands were, were shaking. And I had to hold her with my left hand. And I was helping her. I was showing her my vein. But she couldn't locate the vein. And yet, she's a nurse. I didn't know reception is that when you get there, the first thing you receive is insult. Rude, uncouth, uncouth, terrible with their mouth. They think they are strong. Rudeness is a way to imitate strength. It is not strength. It's a lazy man's way of copying strength. Let me tell you the psychology of rudeness. A rude fellow needs to talk you down so you can be equal in their mind. If they don't talk you down, you are not equal. They feel you are too high. Water you down, get a look, look at you down. Value. Jean, if like I was asking you a question this morning, if you come into somebody's life, has the fellow been truly favored? You are saying either finds a wife find a good thing. Anyone who finds you, has the fellow been favored? In all honesty, has the fellow been favored? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. And young men need to ask yourself, if I marry this woman now, can I bring something good out of her life? The same women that other men marry and are looking radiant, if they end up in the hands of some men, you think it's not the same women. So the issue is not even about the will of God, it's about handling. What, what value are you bringing to the table with the will of God? It doesn't stop. Listen to me. You are not the only one looking for the will of God. Even the will of God is looking for the will of God. You may perceive somebody as the will of God for you and they don't perceive you as the will of God for themselves because they know God better. Are you following what I'm saying here? That if, 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 if a woman is given to me and they say this is your wife, number one, will she be able to eat three square meal? Ah, say what that you are teaching young ladies not, not to be you are teaching them they, they, they should know that it, it goes beyond that it, no, it doesn't go beyond that a man that cannot provide for his household was an infidel I am not saying that there will be no times that the family will go through crisis but listen to me and let me paraphrase this thank you Lord for the sake of many young folks who say that we are into full time ministry full time ministry is full time work it is not sleeping spring it is work. Anything you, mo- you are devoting your entire life to do, there must be clear indication that somebody's time is devoted here. God gave me an instruction, and that's one of the instructions guiding my work in ministry. He said, never present ministry to the next generation as what is difficult to do. In blessing, I will truly bless you. So I know that I have no choice than to understand the ways that make room for prosperity. Because there's a generation coming that must believe that when God sends a man, God backs him up. Do you get what I'm saying? There are too many people who are even in ministry who don't have any book about ministry. Ministry is not done with zeal. That zeal must be according to knowledge. That zeal must be tamped because zeal by itself is anointed. But it does not mean it is correct. It must be according to proven knowledge. There are things that people have written that is a compilation of 38 years of their work with God. I can get it in one sitting. That's value. If you come to my bookshelf at home, you will see books for pastor's wives. I have been reading those books on behalf of the woman I will marry. So, when I talk to you, I can talk to you from all spheres. Do you get what I'm saying? You will see books about business. I, I don't just read tongues beyond the upper room. I read rich dad, poor dad. 
there are many people who have handled a sphere of life in a way that nobody wants to go near that sphere of life again. When you want to marry now, you say, I'm a pastor. Ha ha. <laughs> pastor. Why? Pastors are now perceived as those anointed to be broke. But there's a new generation of pastors who are arising. Who will serve God with integrity of heart and yet will walk in his blessings. Can I hear a big amen to that? Yeah. Now, listen to me. When I was ministering workers meeting this morning, many of you, I said you marry pastors, you didn't say amen. How about a pastor who is blessed? Talk to me now. Men, let me talk to you. Whether the woman is a prayer warrior leader or a Sunday school teacher, a woman is a woman and women love money. When you have fantastic alert, man of God, you will soon discover this. The joy in the room is different. Their joy is not wired to the alert, but somehow, I don't know why. Amen. Joy is different. There are certain things you will do, your wife will tell you again, I love you. And you have not bought a flower. Something just came. I'm telling you. Men here must make up your mind. I will not tell my wife excuses. I will not be giving excuses when others are giving romances. I will do well. You, you will be blessed. Amen. You will have what it takes to be a good husband. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Value. For the sake of those that God has called you to, don't approach that generation empty and dead. Invest. Invest. I want to be able to tell my daughter to marry a man like me. That when you do find a man like your father, marry him. Huh? I don't want my wife to call my daughter and say, don't marry a man like your father. So, whatever it takes, I have to understand all the spheres of my duty both as a husband first and also as a father. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Let me say this to you. There are these celebrities, I can't remember their name now. There's one particular man that married a young girl that used to steal a Nollywood act actress or actor. But now he's married somebody. The, the guy is a politician. I can't remember his name right now. Yes, the name. Mwoko. Yes. The man is... Okay. Everybody is fine because beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. But that kind of girl, the beauty that lies in her eyes was the prosperity of that man. If that same man was earning 100,000 per month, that same girl would not have said yes. Now, I have not said, listen to me. There are ways people make it. They will tell themselves out of depression. Now, I'm going to walk out on everybody and go and make money and they'll come back and like me. That decision makes people enter into destructive methods of making money and they get themselves destroyed. But I'm saying that there are certain things you can't really change because they are, for instance, you can't change your height. If a woman says that she wants a man who is 6.9 feet tall, I'm not the man. You get what I'm saying? But I can enhance myself. Not by wearing high heels. Hold on. There are things you can't change. But there are, you can always enhance every aspect. If by nature 
I have not been favored in this direction, dimension of life. By nurture, I can get compensated in a way that will cover up for all those areas. If a man is not tall, let's say about three feet, and is a billionaire, would you see him as a short man? Why? Law of focus is the attraction towards what is more valuable, what, what is more value. So, when, when, when someone is blessed in an area, focus by nature will not take you to what is disadvantaged. It takes you to the advantage. If you carry value, it becomes your selling point. Do you get what I'm saying? When I was in secondary school, I was not the kind of boy you want to relate with because I was going through a phase of depression. So I was not the talking type. Nobody in my class, re class really liked me as it were. But because you know if you want to pass this subject, particularly mathematics, go around him. So I had friends. Can I, can I give you an advice? When God begins to do something for your neighbor, it means God is in your neighborhood. Please, take this free advice from me. Never get offended at people that God is lifting. The principles that works for that lifting will fight you. I was talking to somebody, some boys, if, if, um, some people, you know some ministers have got come on social media also and insult Bishop Oedekbo and insult. What do you notice? Stagnation. The angels in charge of that kind of announcement will not look at your direction. Virtue doesn't flow where there's dishonor. If men have opened the gate for a certain dimension to pop in, you must honor them so you can drink from that river. Are you following what I'm saying here? Value. It can be enhanced. There are things that you don't know much about that God didn't create you not to know about them. You can read up about them. Huh? Sometimes I wonder in the world where people are doing cosmetic surgery and then um, breast enlargement and all sorts of enlargement and this liposuction and, and all, all those things. I'm not here to talk about that. There can also be mind enlargement. There can be capacity enlargement. That if I'm suddenly called and given appointment at a very high profile place, do I have what it takes to sustain the place? Do you understand what I'm saying now? Value. You can make your area of value your selling point. That's very important. Value can be viewed in two ways. The value that you have and the value that you project. So I give an instance here. A ton 1,000 Naira, according to the value it projects, is 1,000 Naira. But based on handling, according to the value, sorry, but according to the value that it is, if it is torn, and not accepted by anyone, it is useless. But if you were shown a part of it, what would you call it? Thousand naira. Do you understand what I'm saying now? If I pick up one thousand naira and I tear it into two, and I give Pastor Dotun, take one, take it to Abakaliki, and I say, Pastor Joseph, you take one, take to Ife. And if they show you half of the one thousand naira, what would you call it? One thousand naira. But if you handle it closer, it is what? Useless. This is done. So it is important you don't just project value, carry it, embody it. I think I, I, I gave you an illustration when I was teaching on the subject of value last year. That if, let's assume two people of the same age went to the same bank to apply for a job and they look at the both of them after interviewing them and when they were discussing salary, told brother, hey, that we're going to be able to pay you um, 50,000 naira per month and nothing more and told brother B of the same age the same day they went for the same interview at the same bank that we're going to be able to pay you 250,000 naira and nothing more they are not paying them for age 
they are paying them for the investment they have in their time. Value is directly proportional to investment. You are no more valuable more than you are useful. The solution you carry is directly proportional to your level of value. The solution, what can you solve? That's the question of value. What can you solve? And then at what level can you solve it? Because that you can solve some things for main men does not mean you can solve it for kings. And I showed you in Isaiah 60 verse 3 that men will come to your light but kings are not moved until there is brightness in your rising. Brightness. Now, as I... Please don't miss Tuesday Bible study. Don't miss Tuesday Bible study. I want to quickly take you on something now. Um, looking at the subject of the value um, that you project, let's give an instance. How many of you are aware that a thing is as costly as the amount that bought it? Or do you get what I'm saying now? Yes. If I tell you that I, I have a diamond ring, um, and I bought it for 3,000 US dollars. That's quite over a million naira, right? And then you value it, right? But if I also take a very big container of copper, and I said it's 50,000, which one of them would you value more? So every, you weigh the value of a thing by looking at the price that bought it. Now, Christ bought us with his blood. So based on the value we should project, we are as expensive as the price that bought us. But you see, there are people who have now gone further to now do something with themselves despite being bought. It doesn't stop at the point of being bought. What are you doing with yourself? The, whole, the same Holy Ghost has been given to every one of us, right? The same 24 hours, right? The same Bible, right? The same access to the same resource on the internet, right? But the value that you carry now is a reflection of which side are you going to and the investment you are allowed to seep into you. That's the issue. Don't live life as it comes. Do something with it. See, time slips off. You have to directly trap it for it to be useful. One of the questions you must ask you, how will I wake up in the morning and sleep at night without any record of achievement? Why? I must have done something. That the Jew said he asked God, why is it that ministers die young? And God said, why should a tree exist without fruit? Somebody following me. I said, are you following me? Are you following what I'm saying here? Good. But there's a law that functions side by side with a law of value. And this is the twist. It is called the law of recognition. The law of recognition. A thing or a person is accorded honor to the degree that it is recognized. So value in itself is a response to perfection, um, perception of what? So something may carry value, but if you don't have the law of recognition in place, and you, ex you, get, you get what I'm saying now, you have an expectation of it based on your own imaginations. It will come and go. You will not know that what you are waiting for has come. So if you are going to be someone that will trap value and project it and carry it, embody it, you need the law of recognition in place. You need to be able to recognize golden moments. God ordained relationships. Because what you don't recognize, you will waste. God may bring people to your life and listen to me. There's a divine purpose. One of, one of, the, one of the characteristics of those with the spirit of waster, those with the waster's anointing, is that they focus more on weakness of people than their strength. Anyone who must be able to enhance people and see them for who God has made them must look beyond the weakness. Because there are, there, are, there are people who are gold, but they are enveloped in different things that the reason why God is bringing you around is to be able to tear those things down and recognize that there is something of significance here. The same man that, what's his name now? This man, Billy Graham, the woman who was going to marry that said no to him. His wife and himself went to minister somewhere and she pointed. He pointed at the woman and the wife went to thank her for 
not marrying my husband. There are people that have let something golden pass by. And the reason why you need recognition is because of the law of statement season. You need recognition. There are certain things that will come back again, but it will take time. Are you following what I'm saying now? We, we have spent time in the morning talking about presentation. But beyond that, there are people that are in the face of life that the kind of presentation you are expecting, they don't have it. But yet trapped in that, huh? that funny looking personality. There is something in there that if a nest, this fellow is more than all the ones who have been looking at. And that's why the Bible did not say that either gets a wife, said either friends. Because finding will involve searching. It will involve tearing apart. When you are finding something, what do you do? You will have to take away. You, you get, I, don't, I, I tell my wife, when I'm looking for something, I don't like to look for what doesn't have phone number. I say, I'm, I, I misplaced wedding ring a lot. You know, My wife wears it for me every morning. She said, don't forget your ring. I said, the love I have for you is in my heart. So, <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, if I'm looking for, let's say for instance, my wristwatch, I have where I put them. But let's say for I'm looking for my wristwatch. I have to open the door. I have to look. And to, it, it is either search that finds. And to search, you must be willing to scatter. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Sometimes when you see what you are looking for, it is now covered with dirt. It will now take a recognition of that thing according to the state that it is now. When you are digging the ground for gold, it does not come out as gold. It comes out as a stone. It will now have to be, it will, it will respond to those who recognize the color of its existence at that stage. You are looking for your husband, but it's not going to come according to the picture in your heart. The will of God is not a finished product. It's a raw material. So you will have to search and when you find, you will need to recognize to be able to possess. And after that comes the work of refining. There are many people who out of their arrogance have thrown away the will of God because it doesn't look like the finished product. The grass is only green where you water the ground. Are you following what I'm saying here? Somebody, are you following what I'm saying here? I said the law of recognition works side by side, by side with the law of what? Value. When this man saw this woman, he recognized that beyond Eniola, this should be called my wife. He saw that young lady and gave them the name a friend. But he recognized the wife. Alright? That's how many years ago now? Now, I'm sure she was not as beautiful as this when you first saw her. She was in the process. Wait. And still trapped in her is a level of beauty that you obeying God's will for your life will bring out of her. Are you following what I'm saying? Have you noticed that when people get married, they become finer? Shame on those looking for fine girls. Because you are looking for what God has given you, oh, cut last to cultivate. Who looks for a garden without the seed? Are you following what I'm saying here? Listen to me. Before I even made any move to talk to my wife, I had gone over her social media page more than 10 times. And I was looking at all the, all the things she had been. There's nothing she's doing now that she has not been doing. You go and search. I was looking at all those things. I was looking at, I saw a particular picture that she, she squatted with a child. The child was there. And she was looking at that child with so much compassion. I said, this is the mother of nations. Even if this one does not end up being my wife, I recognize a mother in this one. When people come looking for you, what is the track record you have on ground? That's the question. What track record? What have you been doing? There's 
no searching as waiting and searching. You are busy and searching. Busy for God. And all of you, I, before I got married, I, you get what I'm saying now? I, I wasn't sitting and say, this church will only go forward when I get a wife. No. Busy. I told my wife when we were, I said, one, one of the major things I have to cope with in my life, I'm a workaholic. When I start, I don't know when to stop. You need to, you need recognition. One, because there are things that will only happen once in a lifetime. There are once in a lifetime kind of women, there are once in a lifetime kind of men. And they will never come looking like what you are expecting. God, or the, God intentionally hides valuable things from the surface so that those who are looking at things from the carnal standpoint, their wisdom will come to nothing. There are things that will only happen once in a lifetime. And when that time comes, that's your golden moment. You need to recognize it. There are friendships, there are relationships that will only come across your way once in a lifetime. If people love you and you toy with their heart, it may not. Do you get what I'm saying now? There are many of you people, who, you have friends on campus, you are the ones who don't pick their calls. You don't, you don't want to associate with anybody. When one of them suddenly becomes the governor of a state, you will not be telling your children, we were friends. So. Life doesn't favor people who try to pick things only by physical recognition. It doesn't favor them. The reason why you need recognition, there are things that will only happen once in a lifetime. Number two, there are things that only comes around seasonally. They will happen again, but we don't know when. This same opportunity will be given again, but we don't know when. And the, the implication of, his, of that is that before the next opportunity comes, you will go through a season of wilderness experience that there is no provision of grace for. Between one opportunity and the other opportunity is a, is a blank space. That there is no provision of grace for. Why? God expects you to get it right the first time. The Israelites missed Moses. They waited for 40 more years. That was not in their scroll before God. Have you noticed that at a certain age, the distance between the fellow you turned down and the next one that will come may be up to six years? Quote me anywhere. Particularly young ladies who have turned themselves to bouncers now. You boast among your friends, I bounce that one, I bounce that one. An apple is only fresh in its season. Number three, there are things that we are waiting for that we are not the only one waiting for it. This is why you need recognition. There are things you are waiting for that once it arrives, the announcement is made in the spirit realm. And there are many people that God loves the way he loves you who are ready to tap into it immediately. It's called the law of substitution. It's a train. If you miss it, many people will enter in just a few minutes. It is filled. I remember there was a time I missed my flight. I was going to... Ah, I'm, we are past uh, schedule. I need to round up now. All right. I was going to minister in Benin and um, I had gotten to Ikeja. An accident happened. I, I, I got late, missed my flight, tried to book flight for evening. They said no more um, economy, only business class. How much business class? About 100,000. I said book it immediately. Before the fellow gets back online to book it, booked. I was willing to pay over 200000 just for the sake of integrity to make it for that meeting booked. There are things that you are not the only one on queue for. And there are others who are very, they are schooled in knowledge of recognition. The fourth reason why you need recognition is that failure to recognize things is also directly proportional to wastage. When God brings things your ways and you fail your way and you fail to recognize it, you are a waster because you're going to destroy it. What you don't recognize, you destroy. The same, the same girls 
that some guys play a heart like a football will be handled by another guy and you'll be amazed at the beauty, the splendor, am I right? And the glory that will come out of our life and you are just wondering. So this thing does not respond to knowing the will of God or not. How, how are you handling it? The same clothes that somebody can wear look nice and everything is so radiant. You can give it to somebody else and in less than two weeks, you don't want to buy that kind of design again. Am I right? How many of you have ever worn a cloth and you feel you have bought the best? Only to see a bus conductor and the bus you are entering wearing the same cloth. What do you do? <laughs> you rejoice? The reason why you are pained is not because of the same cloth. You are not that bad. The reason why you are pained is because what he has done to his own. Are you following what I'm saying now? Your spouse will come. But what will you do for the will of God? Do, 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 I, do you have the pictures? Yes, project, I love this. Project, project it. Wait, this, this suit, take it back to that suit. This suit was a black suit. It was Photoshop. See, that tie was a yellow tie. It was Photoshop. It's Yemi Kings. I was his photography specimen. Are you seeing the level he was then? Give me more. This was, this was, the, where he was standing when you came down from the bus that God spoke to you that this is your wife. This was, it was the same spot. She was living in that house, the black gate. That was where he came down from the bus. I was living at a place called a Sheriff, one room. It was in that room we were doing all the pastor's meeting in that house. Yes. So, so. This suit it belongs to Yemi Kings. He took the suit from his dad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The dad bought the suit, I think, for his PhD graduation or something. <laughs> Wait. I, I took this picture from the room of a sister then. Her name is Flora. That's where we used to go and eat um, Eba. So this day she was making yellow Eba and uh, Nubu. Give me more. Go back to that one with suit. This suit belongs to. Uh, this suit is on a journey, even till now. This suit belongs to Yemi Kings. Wait, he took the suit from his brother. I wore the suit for this meeting. Then, after the meeting, I gave him the suit. And a man of God that ministered in this program, he now gave the suit to the man of God. Then I was now going on Facebook about two weeks later and I saw somebody else getting married around that man of God with this same suit. So I now said to the man of God that what happened to the suit that they gave you? Now said that the groom was getting married but he didn't have suit. So he now gave the groom the suit. Then after the, mar the wedding, the groom now felt led to now show the suit to the pastor that joined them together. So this is Johnny Man's suit. Let's celebrate Jesus. This is um, admin basement. Ad admin basement. In effect. That shoe. Give me back that shoe. Can you zoom in on that shoe? This is what they call gimba. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying now? No matter what you look like now, it is throwback picture. There's something within you that only those who have eyes can see. You get what I'm saying now? Yes. You are imaginal. Don't talk yourself down and don't let anyone talk you down. You carry a sense of value. You must tell yourself, I'm a once in a lifetime kind of man. Say it loud and clear. If you're a woman, say that to yourself. Hallelujah. Who has been 
blessed this morning. Thank you, Lord. Can you lift your hands and give God praise? And say, from today, I walk in higher sense of value. I recognize. I recognize. Just pray that your eyes of understanding is touched, is enlightened. You recognize. You know, there are two things that scriptures highlighted that you need.